Hi, I'm Linda Whitworth from Alberta Barley. Today I'm going to make orange glazed cranberry raisin squares. I love making this dish at this time of year. The red from the cranberries and the flavor of cranberries is so synonymous with the holiday season. I've started by preheating my oven to 400 degrees and now I'm going to mix together my dry ingredients. I'm starting with some barley flour. Mix it with some all-purpose flour, sugar, and in here I have baking powder and salt. So I'll just give that a little stir to combine those ingredients. And now I'm going to cut in my butter. I've already cut the butter into small pieces so that it will incorporate more easily and I'm just going to put that in with my dry ingredients and cut it in with a pastry blender. You can make this dish in your food processor. Just pulse it gently until your mixture resembles the size of small peas. You don't want to overmix it because your crust will become tough. So we'll just get this all nicely incorporated. I don't know, using a pastry blender just reminds me of old-fashioned goodness. My mom always used a pastry blender for making pies or squares, and I just think it's a great way to start your Christmas baking. So we're getting there, just about to the size of, of small peas. There we go. You can. There we go. So, smallish peas with a few slightly larger pieces, that's going to be just fine. What happens is your butter melts as it's cooking and it leaves your crust nice and flaky. So, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to beat together my wet ingredients. Starting with my eggs, I always like to beat my eggs ahead of time because it breaks down the membrane and makes the rest of the ingredients easier to incorporate. So we'll just give them a little bit of a whisk. Add our milk and our almond extract. Almond extract to me just screams the holiday season. I love putting it in squares when I'm baking. So we'll combine those together. Just set our whisk aside and I'm going to incorporate this in with our dry ingredients. Give this a stir. We want to combine these ingredients until they're well mixed and we have a thick batter. So normally you would think of a batter as something kind of thin and runny, but this is actually, it's not as thick as a dough, but it's, it's a thick batter would be the only way I can really describe it. And all of our dry ingredients, we want them all well incorporated. Mm. It smells so good with that almond. There we go. I think I've got all that flour mixed in. And now I'm going to put half of this batter into our baking pan. I've uh, greased the baking pan ahead of time so that we can get our squares out when they're cooked. And I'm just going to spread our batter nicely in the bottom of the pan. There we go. Set that aside. And now I'm going to mix together our cranberry mixture. I have one can of whole berry cranberry sauce that I'm going to mix with blonde 
raisins. You can use the light raisins that are readily available at this time of year, but because we're using a canned cranberry sauce, we can make this dish any time of the year and use whatever raisins you have in your cupboard. So I'll just give this a quick stir so it's well incorporated. And now we'll spread this evenly over the top of our batter. Oh, it smells so good. Cranberries are so tart and delicious. That's why they make a nice, um, a nice serving with the, you know, with coffee, or it's even nice when you're having a Christmas party and you want some nice squares on the table for people to have easy access to desserts. So that's evenly spread on our base. And now I'm going to just take a couple of spoons and dollop the rest of our batter on top in about 12 dollops. They don't have to uh, fully touch. One of the nice things about this recipe is seeing that red kind of bleeding through to the top. It just oozes flavor and, um, and goodness. It's so good. Oh, this batter smells great. So we'll put our 12 dollops on top. Just like that. It's so easy to make uh, squares like this. And they make such a nice addition to any Christmas tray. And I'll scrape that very last bit out of my bowl to get our last dollop. There we go. It looks so good. And at this stage, I'm going to place our pan in our preheated 400 degree oven and leave it for 25 to 30 minutes until our topping is nice and golden brown. I've taken our squares out of the oven and let them cool a little bit. We're going to make the glaze now, and if you put the glaze on when your squares are too hot, it will just be absorbed right into the squares, and that's not what you want. You want to be able to see it. So I have a measured um, cup and a half of icing sugar here, and I'm going to add the grated orange rind from one orange. Orange rind you don't want to go right down into the white of the orange. You want to just uh, use the orange part and it just imparts a delicious flavor to anything that calls for, for an orange flavoring. I will often, if a recipe calls just for orange juice, I'll often put a little bit of orange rind in as well because it just really bumps up that flavor. Now that we've got the rind off the orange, I'm just going to squeeze it so we have our fresh orange juice. And we'll use the juice as our liquid for our glaze. The combination of orange and cranberry and almond is absolutely outstanding. So once we've got our orange juice ready, I'll just measure in our juice into our icing sugar and orange rind. And now I'm going to stir that until it's well combined. It will be quite runny and that's the texture that we want because we're going to just drizzle it over top of our uh, squares. So you have to stir it until there's no lumps left in it. But that only takes a minute or two. And it is quite a runny glaze, but you can see how that orange rind really gives it wonderful color, and that's also what will give it such great flavor. Now I'm just gonna take my spoon and drizzle it over the top. I like trying to get it back and forth, so you just have a bit of a decorative look to it. 
there's always going to be people who like a little more of that icing and a little less. So you don't need to worry about it being exact on the whole pan of squares. There's lots of glaze for this, but I think that's what we'll leave it at today. They'll be a little gooey to cut out of the pan, so I'll be back in a minute with a plate to show you. And here we have our festive orange glazed cranberry raisin squares, ready for a lovely holiday gathering. Visit us next time at gobarley.com and look for more exciting recipes. Mmm, delicious.